What's up everyone, welcome back to another What If video. Last time, we left off with Bobbity trying to possess someone in order to finally get the energy he needed to reawaken Boo. But he did run into some issues, according to how you all voted on the poll. Let's get into it. Bobbity was either going to try and possess Broly or Vegeta, but realized he'd have trouble no matter who he tried to possess, or that it just might not work at all for either of them. He was not only running out of time, but Deborah was dead, and now he would be hunted down by the Saiyans, Shin, as well as Krillin and Piccolo, who are no longer statues. So in a desperate attempt, he sees Vegeta as his best option, and tries to control him. But on the last part, an overwhelming majority voted saying that Bobbidi's possession wouldn't work this time. Goku is alive, and Vegeta is pretty content with his life and has no desire to fight Goku all out. And with Goku's influence around, he also has no desire to actually go back to his Saiyan ways. Vegeta feels Bobbidi trying to control him, and he easily brushes it off. He doesn't need to fall victim to that this time. Bobbidi is fearful now, and he tries it on Broly, but Broly doesn't even react. Bobbidi thought he could manipulate Broly's latent rage, but it doesn't work and he can't possess Broly at all. Eventually, Bobbidi is found and he's quickly killed with little effort. All that remains is Boozag, which has only gotten a minute amount of energy from the fights in the spaceship. It's nowhere near close to hatching. Shin is able to take it far away and seal it for the time being, and informs everyone that he'll have Lord Beerus come and destroy it once he wakes up. No one knows who Beerus is at this point, except for Vegeta obviously, and this causes the group to actually find out about Beerus earlier on because of Shin's passing mention of him, and they find out about Beerus being the strongest guy in the universe at this point, as well as being the god of destruction and what that entails. As expected, this piques Goku's interest, and he actually asks Shin to take him to Beerus to fight, but Shin instantly turns this down because not only is Beerus way out of his league, and not really the friendly type, but he can't wake Beerus from his nap. They'll just have to wait if they ever want to meet him. Now with all of that done, the Dragon Balls are gathered, and the only wish made that day is to bring Kibito back for Shin since he was the only good guy who died. I mean, yeah, we got Spokovich and Yamu, but I don't know if they'd even want to bring them back, and they're not really that important either way. No other wishes need to be made. The Boo arc basically doesn't even happen. No Boo, no Super Saiyan 3, no Majin Vegeta, Ultimate Gohan, Fusion of Patara, or Elder Kai, none of that. Without being able to possess anyone, Bobbidi's whole plan falls apart and the Boo arc stops before it even could begin. Remembering that Beerus is still around because of Shin gets Vegeta to realize he needs to train more if he ever wants to not only surpass Kakarot, but also defend against Beerus if he ever should need to. In his training with Goku, Goku is tapped into a power above Super Saiyan 2, which he calls Super Saiyan 3, but Vegeta sees it as useless because of how draining it is on stamina. He begins to ponder that Uzawa form that Broly and Gohan have, the Wrathful form. It might be useful if he can combine it with Super Saiyan somehow. He already had mastery over the Great Ape form, so maybe he can master the Wrathful form as well and improve it. While Goku pursues this new Super Saiyan 3 form and tries to perfect it in order to preserve his energy, Vegeta begins to experiment with something different. On the other hand, we have Gohan, who continues his training, but now that he's getting busier and busier, he tries to mix it in with his schedule. He doesn't fall behind on training, but he just trains a little less. Broly also starts to train a little less given this new period of peace, but he's still able to train a fair amount. He doesn't really have any need to though, so that's why he just stopped because he doesn't really care that much about fighting like Goku and Vegeta did. Over this time skip, here's what the power levels will look like. Goku and Vegeta are pretty equal at Super Saiyan 2, with Goku at Super Saiyan 3 obviously being stronger than both of those. Because of all the training he's done in the story and how powerful he's gotten, Gohan at Super Saiyan 2 is actually a little bit stronger than Goku at Super Saiyan 3. And of course above him is Broly who's now mastered Super Saiyan, and that form alone surprisingly is stronger than Gohan which is insane to think about, but it makes sense considering that it's Broly who's using it. Eventually, we arrive at the Battle of God's Ark. Beerus awakens and visits King Kai in order to fight Goku, who is a little weaker with Super Saiyan 3 than he is in canon, but not by a considerable amount. Beerus is about to head to Earth to find the other Saiyans because he finally wants to find the Super Saiyan God that he's been dreaming of. And funnily enough, in this timeline, Goku isn't the strongest of the Saiyans, he's actually one of the weakest. He only recently discovered Super Saiyan 3 instead of getting the jump on it before Boo, and without being in the afterlife with all that extra energy, he missed out on the large potential boost of power that comes with the form, because he discovered it later and he doesn't know how to utilize it as well. Beerus arrives to the party, and he has a pretty fun time. Just like in my what if about Gohan training after the Boo Saga, there's no Boo alive this time, so there's no nonsense with him in the pudding. While Whis and Beerus enjoy themselves, Beerus remembers why he's here, which gets Vegeta kinda shaken up about seeing Lord Beerus want to fight, but he feels very confident for some reason. 
Goku arrives on Earth, and he doesn't watch from afar this time. He actually makes it known that he's there. Beerus gets ready to fight everyone. First, Vegeta goes into his new wrathful form that he's been practicing and fights Beerus. And it's obviously pretty weak in comparison. And he cranks it all the way up to Super Saiyan 2. The result is the same for him like it was with Goku. He doesn't really do anything with this. Gohan is up next, and he goes Super Saiyan 2 right away, and Beerus is surprised at how powerful he is with that same form. Eventually, he even cranks it up to Super Saiyan Rage, and he puts up somewhat of a fight with it, but is easily defeated by Beerus even with the Rage boost that comes with Super Saiyan Rage. Next up is Broly, and this is where things get a little bit hairy. Broly is putting up the best fight out of all of the Saiyans, even better than Gohan in Super Saiyan Rage, but he begins to get pushed back easily by Beerus, and he fights harder. He gets knocked down once and gets back up, getting weaker by using all of his stamina and getting frustrated. The cycle repeats until Broly is at his limit, and Beerus is about to knock him out for good, getting tired of this fight, but Broly begins screaming and Goku is immediately fearful. He remembers back to when he met Broly on Vampa, and when he suppressed Broly's rage when they first met, but it's crept back up into Broly, who's now beginning to power up. His hair begins to shift from the golden color that it has now, to a sort of greenish color. His eyes begin to go blank as he loses control for the first time, and he goes full power as a Super Saiyan full power, or legendary Super Saiyan, whatever you want to call it, I, I don't know, they keep switching up the names on it. He's able to knock Beerus back and actually cause Beerus to put in more effort, and Beerus actually begins to get entertained. Remember, Broly isn't as strong as he was in his movie, because this is way before, but at this point we'll say he gets Beerus to use about 25% of his power. However, this doesn't last and Beerus is still able to knock him out. Being disappointed that he hasn't found a true foe, he seems a little irritated, but then Vegeta gets his attention. Vegeta wants to test something out that he's been hiding, something that he worked on while Goku has tried to use Super Saiyan 3. He goes back into his wrathful form, with Beerus unimpressed as he fought Vegeta easily in this stage before. Vegeta smirks, and his power begins to rise. I can't believe I hadn't thought of this sooner, combining the power of two techniques into one. His hair flickers yellow, as Vegeta eventually ends up increasing in size, as if he's going to turn into a golden great ape, since he's combining the power of a great ape with the power of Super Saiyan, and I'm sure by now you already know where I'm going with this. Before he actually increases in size to become the great ape, he shrinks back down to his regular height, and is coated in a golden aura. The aura clears, and Vegeta is revealed there, looking completely unrecognizable. He has those same yellow eyes that he did in his wrathful form, but other than that he looks completely different. His hair is longer, he has a tail again, he has red fur, this is something no one has seen before. Vegeta obviously has become a Super Saiyan 4, but in this scenario, we're gonna call it Wrathful Super Saiyan. He calls it this because he considers it a different route from the numbered Super Saiyan variants, so he doesn't just call it Super Saiyan 4, I mean it doesn't really make sense in this case. But for us, we know it's Super Saiyan 4. His power at this point is comparable to Broly's when he went full power, yet Vegeta hasn't even powered up yet. And he has this power under control and begins to raise his key in order to fight Beerus. The two have a lot of fun with this fight, with Beerus exerting as much power as he did with Broly, but faltering a bit because Vegeta is more skilled and he keeps powering up, and he's more controlled than Broly. But even with this brand new form, it doesn't really end up working that well. Vegeta is actually surprised at how powerful this is. I mean the multipliers for the Super Saiyan forms have become kinda irrelevant now in Dragon Ball Super, and there's no real multiplier for Super Saiyan 4, but just for a measure of his power, the Great Ape form is a 10 times boost in power, and Super Saiyan is supposed to be 50 times. So if you add those two together, that's going to be 500 times, and I'm sure it would be greater with the Super Saiyan 4 form. That's probably just what it would be at Golden Great Ape. I mean, obviously we don't know, but we could just speculate that it's somewhere around 500 times or greater, which is just an insane boost in power for him. But obviously, this doesn't really do much to Beerus. So they get back to the party, and Vegeta is done fighting, with Beerus pleased to see that he's actually so strong, but not enough to be a Super Saiyan God. Gohan suggests the idea of getting the Dragon Balls to see what to do to get Super Saiyan God, so they summon Shenron and find out how to do the ritual. They find out that they need six Saiyans, and they have no issue getting that. Videl doesn't even need to reveal that she's pregnant. They have Goku, Gohan, Goten, Trunks, Vegeta, and Broly already there. And Paragus is actually there as well, so they have more Saiyans than they need. But the question here is, who do they actually give the form to? The first option is Goku, but he's technically the weakest here, so why would they give it to the weakest one? Vegeta is the strongest when he's Super Saiyan 4, but otherwise he's around the same level as Goku and they don't know how the God form will affect the power, so it might not make any difference at all. And Gohan is both powerful and he has a lot of control, but he's a half Saiyan, so they're worried that the ritual won't work and they're hesitant to try it on him. 
and of course, Broly is an option, but since he's prone to going berserk after they saw what he did with the full power Super Saiyan, they're really hesitant on giving him a new power. Not to mention, he has only just mastered Super Saiyan a few years ago and he hasn't even gotten Super Saiyan 2. Not to mention he's lost stamina from his fight with Beerus. If they did give him a god form and he didn't end up going berserk, he might not even be able to control it. He is the strongest pure Saiyan one in base form, but it's very risky to give him the power in case he rages out again, or he simply can't control it and it just kills him somehow. Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Broly, Goten, and Trunks gather together and prepare, and they don't know who to channel the power into. But I'm going to leave this option up to you. Who receives Super Saiyan God? Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, or Broly? Leave your thoughts on the poll and decide what happens in the next part. Which option did you vote for and why? What did you think about this part and how will the next part go? Comment your thoughts below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And hit the bell icon for notifications of future parts of this what if or other videos of mine. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you on the next one.